Hey everybody, welcome to Tony's time. It's Tony George along with Arun Shiva. That is Indian Cowboy over at DocSports.com. And of course, coming to you with this week's edition. We still haven't got a name for the show, Arun. We're we're still working on it. Arun and I are gonna I'm gonna give I'm gonna send Arun the top 20 suggestions. And then we're going to circle like our top three and whichever one's matched, we're probably going to name the show and we'll use one of the viewers' uh, ideas for the name of this show. And then, of course, I'm going to send you some free Doc Sports swag. Um, coming to you on Veterans Day, I just wanted to give a shout out to all the veterans out there. We appreciate your service. Um, we're uh, the home of the free because of the brave. And uh, we surely appreciate that. And I'm from a military family, so... Nonetheless, and especially those who had family members that uh, had their uh, loved ones lay their lives on the altar of freedom so all of us can do what we do do out there. And uh, we surely appreciate it. So uh, happy Veterans Day. And uh, there's not a day that goes by that we're not thankful. You see a veteran out there this week, say you're in line at Burger King or Starbucks. Hey, pay it forward. Pick up the tab. They surely picked up your tab, folks. So. That being said, let's get to the business at hand. In Arun, uh, underdogs went eight and five last week. Uh, books got beat up. The contests got beat up out here in Las Vegas. I got beat up with a big play on Arizona last week. I'm going to go ahead and rant on that a little bit later. But uh, whether I go four and zero oh or zero oh and four, uh, the day the second that day's over, it's water under the bridge and it's on to the next week. So here we are, uh, week ten and. Uh, the, I guess, the division that somehow Arun is going to put forth a playoff team, that would be the NFC East. <laughs> oh, man, just a complete disaster. Uh, the Philadelphia Eagles off a of bye week, uh, laying three and a half on the road at the New York Giants. Total on this was 44 and a half, Arun. Last week, somehow, the New York Giants won a football game. Um, they gave up 365 yards passing to Alex Smith, who is a third-string quarterback, and and um, big fan Alex Smith. It's a great story. Um, so I'm shocked that he's even walking around, let alone playing in the NFL uh, after seeing that uh, E60 thing or E30 or whatever, 30 for 30 on ESPN about him. But nonetheless, they're going to go with him again this week. They must really hate Haskins. Uh, to to put to Will Smith out there, I can tell you that. So Haskins' career in in uh, Washington, unless Smith goes down, is is over here. But uh, you know they allowed 365 yards passing. They allowed five sacks, and uh, they had 13 units to the good, 13 minutes to the good at time of possession, and still only managed to put the Redskins away by three. Arun, um, if you look at the box score there. Um, and Philadelphia off a bye week, and Philadelphia getting a little healthier on the offensive line in the bye week, too. Uh, might be a buy sign on Philadelphia this week, in my opinion. I'm handing that off to you, Arun. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's an interesting game. Um, I'll tell you this I heard something crazy today, and I have to bring this up that Bill Belichick. Um, there is a real chance that Bill Belichick, remember Joe, Joe Judge is, uh, is a favorite of Bill Belichick's, right? Yeah. So he used to, to coach for Bill Belichick. So he's a favorite of his, um, sort of like Jimmy Garoppolo. But uh, the rumor is that Bill Belichick is going to leave the Patriots after this year. And uh, remember Josh McDaniels was supposed to coach the Colts and then he reneged and came back. Uh, so the rumor is that Bill's not going to be interested in, in building this team back up. He's getting up there in age. And he's going to leave, hand the team over to McDaniels, and then he has a real big soft spot for the Giants organization. He hates the Jets organization. He said that was the best movie ever, he's ever made in his career, was to leave the Jets. And he has a soft spot for the Giants organization. I can see Gallman uh, moving out and Bill going up there and becoming the new GM of the uh, of these Giants and having uh, Joe Judge be his protege, kind of like what Pat Riley did or Phil Jackson wanted to do with Steve Kerr and so on. So I just want to bring that up there. So as far as this game is concerned, you have a Giants team that beat the Redskins, Tony, by three, like you talked about, lost to Tampa Bay by two, lost to Philly by one, lost to, or beat Washington by one, lost to Dallas by three, and then the Rams game, they only lost by eight points to their credit. So this is a team 
that the games that they've lost, they've lost by a total of 14 points the last four games. And the games that they've won, they've won by four points the last two games. So this is a team that's playing in a lot of tight ball games. And, of course, they got a little bit of revenge here. But at the same time, these Eagles beat the Cowboys by 14. They have a winning streak now. They beat the Giants. They only lost to the Ravens by two, hung in there against Pittsburgh to lose by nine, beat the Niners, even though the Niners were were short-ended. And they tied a good Cincinnati team as well. It's a tough game, man. It's a tough game. I mean, because the Giants are playing everybody close. I don't trust the Eagles. The numbers would tell you to take the Eagles, but I don't really trust the Eagles fully either. Um, it's tough to say. I will say this, though. I actually like the under in a small way. Uh, I think the total came out low for a reason. Uh, the last time was 21-22. Could these two teams play even better offense this time? Maybe. Uh, but I don't trust the I don't trust either offenses fully. And plus, the total is low, right? When if this game was supposed to be higher scoring, wouldn't you expect like 46 and a half or something? And yet, it still right. comes out like at 42 and it gets bumped up to 44. So my early lean, and that's something that I want to tell the folks on on the show um, that when you and I give leans and stuff, it's it's a lean on a Wednesday or or Wednesday slash Thursday morning. It obviously could change later on in the week. It's with what the information that we have right now. But right now I'm leaning under. Yeah, I could see that happening here uh, for sure. Uh, it, it, the one thing I guess uh, that the Giants are playing their 10th straight week. Uh, they're on a 5-1 and one ATS run. But how much do you have left in the tank after playing five straight games decided by three points or less? Those are draining, you know. And um, – the I guess uh, I was impressed on how they played um, Tampa Bay on the Monday night game. However, when I saw what Tampa Bay did over the weekend, uh, I wasn't so impressed with them hanging that tight in there with them. Um, Jones is a, a good quarterback, but he, he's got to quit turning the ball over. And I think that is the key in this game, the turnovers. And I think if Carson Wentz gets the support up front on the offensive line, uh, they get some guys back here. Um, Jason Peters, yeah. uh, left tackle coming back is huge. For that is yeah, you're, huge. You're right about that. Alshon Jeffrey is also coming back too. I forgot to mention yeah. that. Yeah, and uh, also uh, Goodert. And uh, I'm looking at the injury report here. Uh, tight end Goodert back up to uh, to uh, their stud Ertz and uh, Jalen Rager. Rieger's back this game too. So they've got a, they've got a, two more weapons and an offensive lineman. And I think you'll see a little bit different Philadelphia Eagles team here. Um, if I was at least early in the week, and you may get some sharp action on New York by Sunday, but if, if uh, I was going to play Philadelphia here, I definitely would lay the 120 and buy the hook off the three. Um, just as a little bit of insurance policy, it should be a good football game. Another game here that I'm just going to I'm just going to top spin since you're a tennis player. I'm going to top spin volley lob this back into your side of the court. Um, the Baltimore Ravens um, taking on New England. This is a Sunday night game. Uh, New England had to use every available option known to mankind to beat the New York Jets on Monday Night Football. Um, and, of course, Baltimore off a huge win against uh, the Colts, who are a good team. Uh, we talked about it last week on the show. We thought that the Ravens would go in there and beat them. Um, and uh, this line opened at six and a half and 41. Uh, the, the total shot up um, two and a half points to 43 and a half right now, Arun. Uh, there's been a lot of love for the over in this game. And also why, I have no idea. I mean, New England could not stretch a field vertically at all. Not right now. Um, and of course the total from six and a half, now it's up to seven. Um, I tell you what, I don't know what to do with this game. I really don't know what to do with this game here. I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and, and, uh, like I said, lob that ball over the net, nice and soft to you and see what you got to think about this one. Yeah. You know, the last time these two teams met, the, the Ravens dropped 37 on these Patriots. And, and Bill Belichick knows that his offense cannot compete at all with these Ravens uh, and their yeah. offensive weapons. That they have. I mean, this is a team that has Des Bryant on the practice squad just because they have so many different options um, right now. So 
so what will Belichick do? He's just going to have Cam and maybe Damian Harris comes back. I think Burkhead's back. Um, he's going to just run the heck out of the ball. I mean, this team, the New England Patriots now are similar to the Kentucky Wildcats in the SEC at this point. They're just going to option you. And they're just going to run the ball to death and drain the clock and keep your keep your opposing offense off the field. So that's the only way this team is going to remain close. Yes, I had a free play on the over on Monday night between uh, the Patriots and the Jets. But you take away that game, it takes the Jets for the Patriots to drop 30. Other than that, yeah, they scored against 21 against Buffalo. But Buffalo is not great defensively at times. When these Patriots face a really good defense, like San Fran, six points, or Denver, 12 points, or Kansas City, 10 points. So yeah. if these if these Ravens can hold the Colts, who are kind of similar to the Patriots in a way, to 10 points, and they can hold the Bengals to three points, I can see how Bill doesn't want the Ravens to score and just going to drain the heck out of the ball, you know, the clock. And I can also see the Ravens playing fantastic defense as well. And I think the only way that I can look at this game is the under, because you're right, everybody and their mom is on the Ravens at 80%. And the Patriots have a way of playing up to good teams. Remember, they played up to the Seahawks, right? They played them pretty close on the road and stuff. So I can't go against Cam on this type of game. And, and Cam's a better quarterback here, too. He just doesn't have the weapons. I'm still yeah. not high on Lamar Jackson, man. And I know a lot of people are. I'm still not high on Lamar. I would take Cam in a heartbeat over Lamar. Cam just needs some weapons. So uh, I like the under here. Yeah, and you're going against the green. 95% right now, tickets written are on the over. And it's currently at 43 and a half, up from 41 and a half. You got 79% of people on Baltimore and New England. And the one thing that you say, you know, and bear in mind, you never want to get involved with a game where you're betting based on what you saw last week, especially this time of year in the NFL, where teams are Jekyll and Hyde from week to week. And whatever reason that is, uh, pretty much because they're playing pros. I mean, you know, um, Pro teams, if you don't bring your A game for whatever reason, Tampa Bay is a good example. Uh, their game against New Orleans the other night. If you don't bring your A game and you're not ready to play, um, you're going to be in trouble. If you don't have uh, the teams like New England that have the perceived level of talent, well, Brady's gone, but they got everybody else. So, you know, they had like four defensive starters opt out uh, because of COVID for, for openers and an offensive lineman. Uh, so... Now the talent discrepancy is not so large when you're playing teams. Let's just take AFC East teams, Miami, Buffalo. You know, the, you, New England's not going to win this division. They're not going to uh, over and under for them having six wins this year. is going to be iffy. I can tell you that right the, the, with what they have right now. And uh, the only way they win this game, and one thing Belichick will do, you'll see a lot of white, you'll see a lot of Burkhead, and they'll be smashing it right up the middle like they tried to do against the Jets. That's exactly what they did when they played Kansas City. They ran the ball, keep that other offense off the field. Um, they don't have any uh, – they've got basically two playmakers on defense, McCourty being one of them. Um, I'm not so on New England. I'm with you. The only way I can look on this – is to go 100% contrarian and take the under in this game. That'd be 43 and, remember, and a Dante, half. You're, you're right about that. Dante Hightower opted out because of COVID, too. I mean, they yeah. lost a lot of talent because of COVID. Yeah. Uh, I will tell you this. You should pick up uh, Nikhil Harry um, if you get a chance. Uh, not Nikhil Harry, but uh, uh, Jacoby Myers. He had 11 targets yeah. last game. Yeah. yeah. So he's, he's a new favorite target. That would be a good fantasy pickup for those folks. There you go. And I've, I've heard rumblings about that this week from a couple of my fantasy buddies. I've, I'm, uh, I don't play fantasy. I got my hands full with all this other stuff we're doing. I'd love to play, but I do get, I, I, I offer some advice from time to time. Um, next game here is Seattle, um, taking on the Rams. Um, this one here, Rams minus one and a half, 55 and a half. This opened at uh, 53, so it shot up two and a half points on the total. Um, this is an interesting game here, Arun. Um, Seattle, I don't know whether Buffalo played the best game of the year last week or whether it was just a bad spot for Seattle. 
You know, that was the third time on the East Coast in between division games for them. And, you know, something was going to uh, fall apart on them at some point in time. And I think maybe that was the game. I don't know what your thoughts are on that. We're going to talk about Buffalo here in a minute as they're taking on the freaking Cardinals. But I'm going to have a little rant there. But at the end of the day here, this is a classic divisional battle. These, these two always have knocked down drag outs Arun, um, without question. I think it's probably going to be one of the better games of the day. Um, and the Rams are at SoFi here. I'm looking at the spread. You've got 96% of the money on uh, – oh, no, 94% of the spread is on Seattle. Um, and also they took them 96% of the money on – bets on the money line are on Seattle. Uh, that means that the L.A. Rams are ruined. Six uh, percent so far. The tickets written are on the spread. Four percent on the money line, and the over and under, uh, believe it or not, is split right down the middle at 50-50. 52 percent on the over, 48 percent on the under. Here, um, does Seattle bounce back? Um, I guess we're going to find out just how good they are because I've got them as one of the top contenders in the NFC to to win the NFC Championship. Probably go play Kansas City in the Super Bowl. Um, I don't have the Rams in that category, Rune. You know, I've got the Rams like uh, 14th or 13th in my power ratings, and I've got Seattle up there around 6th. So uh, the, the the better team right now is catching points. Um, it is a road game, but it's not like going out to Buffalo, obviously, you know, and cross country. So this is an hour plane ride. But at the end of the day, uh, your thoughts on this one? So I think so. I think what's going to happen in this game is, first of all, Seattle has revenge too. They got thumped by the Rams, twenty-eight to twelve last year, I think. Um, and the Rams have Tampa Bay on deck as well. But the issue here for for Seattle, um, obviously, the better quarterback is Russell Wilson because when when Goff had to play cover two basically uh, against Miami, um, he got destroyed by the Dolphins' defense. You know. So this is a an LA team that comes off of a that ugly, ugly 17 to 28 loss against Miami. Um, what's interesting about this game is neither team has lost back to back games all year, um, and we're going to learn a lot about Seattle because Seattle's wins were against um, Atlanta, sub 500, New England, sub five, Dallas, sub five, Miami, you know, around 500, probably a quality win. Uh, Minnesota, who was sub five at that point, lost to Arizona above 500, beat San Fran when San Fran didn't have their their stars. And now they lost to Buffalo. The other thing is Seattle's offense is fantastic, but their defense is a little questionable because they're so, so young. Um, Buffalo, 44 points, San Fran, 27, and so on. But the thing about the Rams is the Rams' offense is really struggling of late, if you yeah. notice. Uh, the Rams yeah. are just not are not able to push the ball down the field. And you can tell that by scoring just 17 on the Giants or 30 against Washington, which is fine, but 16 against San Fran. 24 Chicago. The Rams are the now old school Bears team. They're going to beat you with defense and they're going to score a select number of points, 24 to 27 points. If you can score 30 on the Rams, you're going to win because the Rams aren't going to be able to score 30 on you. Um, in fact, I mean, over the last five games, the Rams have only hit 30 once. Uh, and remember, this team used to be a high powered offense. They put up only against 20 points against Dallas uh, early this year. I. So who do you trust more? Do you trust the Seattle offense more or do you trust the Rams defense more is what this kind of comes down to. Um, and, you know, I always lean defense to begin with. Um, but if I had to take a lean, I would take, I would fade the public and maybe take the Rams, but I can't take either because I can't take Seattle. I can't go against Seattle off of a loss. Um, and I like the Rams defense a little bit more, but if I had to take something, I would probably take the Rams, but I'm not going to make this a premium selection on my card. This is this is the great equalizer in terms of looking at this game from a handicapping perspective. And what I mean by that is you have the number three ranked offense with Seattle, um, and you have the worst defensive rank with Seattle. So you have uh, the Rams – uh, defense is number two uh, in the league, and Seattle's is dead last. Um, so you think anybody that's laying less than a field goal with those percentages, 
and those rankings, uh, they're an automatic take. But then on the other side of the coin, Arun, in the NFL, the first thing I ask myself is, who's got the better quarterback? And it's not even a race here. It's not even close. So you have a great defense laying less than a field goal against, in my opinion right now, even after last week's debacle, probably the best quarterback in the NFL. You can you you can have an argument between him and Mahomes and this, that, and the other, but Russell Wilson is um, – he's got a few years on Mahomes. Uh, he's got some experience. He's got a Super Bowl ring now along with Mahomes. He's got one. But at the end of the day, I think Russell Wilson is still the odds-on favor for the MVP. And this is the type of game that I have seen him win time and time again over the years, you know, where they have – and that's one thing – that I could tell you is they find a way to win, which is why I would lean Seattle here. And I, I and here's the one stat that I can't get over against the Rams. The Miami Dolphins beat them. Here was the yardage in that game. When the Rams played the Dolphins, they out yarded them 471 to 145 and lost the game. That's not being able to put a game away. And I will guarantee you, as improved as Miami is, uh, Seattle's better. You know, and off a loss, they're going to be dialed in. I could only lean Seattle here. Arizona taking on Buffalo. Um, so, again, we're talking about the, the buff, Buffalo who was involved with Seattle last week. Arizona, speaking of yardage mismatches, and Miami winning a game while getting out yarded. The Cardinals 442 to 312 yards last week, and a, and a, a big a seven point fourth quarter lead, and uh, so you could tell folks I bitter because I had a six unit play on Arizona. I keyed them in in uh, uh, numerous wagers I had out here and, and had them in the circuit contest. Um, the Arizona uh, Cardinals, um, they're definitely going to get out coached because Kingsbury can't coach. And the Arizona Cardinals have absolutely no defense whatsoever. They cannot tackle. They cannot cover. They can't press cover. If they're in cover two, they 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 give such soft cushions that everything underneath uh, the team chips away at them. And let me tell you something. Right, that's right in Buffalo's wheelhouse. On top of that, they have a mobile quarterback. Um, and Tua was able to move the chains last week, being a mobile quarterback against that defense. And Allen is no different. Um, the total in this game, Arun, is 56. Arizona is at home, laying one and a half. Um, I'll tell you what, right now, you can talk me out of it. I don't see anything but a shootout. As a matter of fact, I, I, forgot, I, I didn't look at those uh, off the top of my head right now. But last time I checked, both these teams are major over teams so far this season. I had this written down and I forgot to, uh, well, damn it, I forgot to do it here. But yeah, six and, um, they're like uh, six, they're like 11 and, and something on overs combined. Um, I don't think either one's going to be able to stop the other one. I think it's an overplay here all the way. I'm afraid to take a side in this one because Arizona just can't close the deal. They did close the deal on an overtime game against Seattle because uh, they got a call that went their way, which was a holding call. Uh, but at the end of the day here, I can't trust uh, Kingsbury to win a big game close. I mean, he's I'm not saying he's Anthony Lynn because nobody's that bad. Uh, but at the end of the day here, I, I like the over in this game, and that's about it. Yeah, I think that's that's right. You have a um, – the thing is you have a Buffalo team that's won three in a row, to their credit, um, and the only losses yeah. they had was that other loss to Tennessee and then that loss to Kansas City. And both those teams could easily win the Super Bowl. So this is a team that did beat Vegas. They beat the Rams. They beat Miami. You can't knock the Bills' resume at all. Um, they have they've certainly have a good resume. And, of course, the public is going to take the Bills. Uh, but Arizona's favored here, right, because they're coming off that loss – um, they did beat Seattle at home. Um, they beat Dallas and the Jets, which is not impressive. But they lose these type of these these really grudge grungy type matches. Like they lost that Carolina game by ten. They lost to Detroit by three. 
I, which goes to your point about losing the teams you shouldn't lose to. I mean, look at all these teams that have beaten Detroit, right, by two or three touchdowns. They make adjustments in the second half, and they beat Patricia's team. Uh, but they did beat San Fran. Um, I think if you if you look at this game, um, you know, especially the way that Buffalo is scoring the points right now, uh, like they did against Seattle, um, they did put up 24 points against New England, but that's pretty hard to do against New England. They just didn't show up against the Jets. Um, but against teams of, of this caliber of a defense, they'll drop 30 on you, right? Like like Vegas or the Rams, they drop 30 and 35, or even Miami, they drop 31 on them. Um, so this seems to be a game that can be probably, you know, one of those 30, 30 to 27 type games, which is why the total, I think, results in, in 56. Um, I do think Arizona plays well in this game, but I just don't know if they'll be able to hold on because the Bills are going to come back. I actually think Arizona will probably have the lead early on too, um, but I think Buffalo will, will make a comeback. Um, so I think the, the over is probably a decent lean. Um, if I had to take a side, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I think Arizona might be able to hold on uh, because at home they were able to hold on against Seattle. But I mean, how do you, Buffalo has, Buffalo has only lost to Kansas City and Tennessee. And that Tennessee game, don't hold it against them because you know, they had all those COVID misses, Tennessee did, and they felt like the world was coming, was against them. So they rallied. Yeah. And you know what happens when Tennessee gets mad. They they go and thump people when they get mad. Uh, that's what Vrabel's team does. So um, I would say lean on the over and probably a small lean on Arizona. Pretender or contender, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Arun. I mean, uh, they're laying, uh, they were opened up at six. Now they're laying five and a half on the road at Carolina, a team they beat by 14 earlier this year. And I had Carolina in that game. Uh, uh, Teddy Bridgewater is a cover machine as an NFL quarterback. Um, at the end of the day, Matt Rule is an up, he's going to be an up and coming hot coach. And he's going to stay right there in Carolina where he wants to be. But at the end of the day here, um, I, I, have, I can't remember when I've seen a team beaten that thoroughly as Tampa Bay was. I'm talking offensively, defensively, special teams, the return game in the special teams, tackling, blocking, basic fundamentals. And I don't know, um, either uh, Tom Brady is finally hitting the wall at 40, and I'll, I'll, I'll put this ball in your court. I don't know whether he's finally hitting the wall at 43 years old, or he's, uh, you know, just, uh, he, and, and he's due, for, or he's just due for a bounce back off a bad game. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I saw receivers dropping balls. I th That whole game was just, a, and hey, look, everybody has a shitty day at work. We all do, you know. Um, that's, you know, that, that's life, but you would expect somebody of Tom Caliber's caliber. You would expect a coach of Bruce Arians caliber, uh, to at least have his team halfway prepared. They didn't even look like they had a game plan. I mean, there was, it was just a complete and utter dismantling. And I don't know how you go on the road, uh, and turn it around and lay a number against a very feisty Carolina team. Now, the one thing about Carolina is it looks like McCaffrey's not going to play. He banged up his shoulder against Kansas City trying to get out of bounds, and I think he's got a slight separation or something there. But also bear in mind in this first game of the season, they were covering against Tampa Bay, and Tampa Bay was trying to kill the clock with about a minute and a half left, and they handed the ball off to Fournette, and he took off running and ran 40 yards when they were in, on third down and whatever to kill the clock and scored a touchdown. Carolina gets the ball back, goes all the way down, run out of clock with three seconds left on the two-yard line, and they were able to move the ball on them all day long. The problem was in that game is Teddy Bridgewater had three turnovers, two picks, and a fumble inside of the 25-yard line. And they basically gifted them. I think they got two touchdowns and a field goal out of those. They basically gifted him 17 points in that game. I think this was going to come a lot tougher. Um, I think maybe Tampa Bay is going to, hey, we got to get right with Jesus this game, and Carolina is going to do what Carolina is going to do. They're going to hang around and be passed, have a good game plan, be ready to play four quarters of football. I think this is too many points on the road. Yeah, I think what's happened, the problem with Tampa Bay is they, they have too much talent on the offensive side of the ball. And they cannot figure out a rhythm. 
I think there is such thing as too much talent sometimes. And you have an offense now that they were they were clicking when they just had Jones and Fournette and maybe Evans and Godwin and and Gronk, right? And now you're going to add Brown. And now you're going to add yeah. that other tight end um, as well, which is Scotty Miller. There's just too many people going around. There's only one football. So if you've got five weapons, that's enough. You're adding like eight weapons. I mean, you're just picking up every – It's it, if you're a football team, you need to do a few things really, really well. And then you add select things into the game plan for that week. And I think Tampa Bay, the problem is there's no sync because they're always adding new people. Right now, Brown is in there. And there's just too much stuff going on all the time. So, Tony, Tampa Bay rushed for eight yards last game. They only had oh. five rushing attempts. They, they had five rushing attempts. They rushed for eight yards. Brady threw three interceptions. Um, usually, Tampa Bay has the ability to come back. I just think uh, – I don't fully put it on Tom. I think it's it's also that Bruce Arians gets outcoached sometimes. And I think that quietly gets overlooked. But Sean Payton is one incredible coach. And remember, look what he's had to do with no Michael Thomas, with so many injuries – and yet he still wins yeah. games because he's an amazing coach. And Bruce Arians would never be able to do that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so I think it was more of the Saints than the Bucks playing. Really. I just think it was just a bad um, – you know, can you imagine if Bill Belichick had this much talent? Right? Look, look at it that way. I just think it was, oh, yeah. a, bad, it was a bad game planning. Uh, it was on the coaching staff probably. Um, I do think that the Saints will play – or the Bucks will play much better on the defensive side of the ball. Um because of this horrible showing in the last game, I expect the Bucks to play a lot better. Um, I can see this game, uh, but at the same time, you could see Carolina being an active underdog because they have lost the last few games by just a few points, you know? So yeah. um, if I had to lean, I might lean on the Bucks on the bounce back just because of what they did against the Packers, beating them 38 to 10 on a similar type of thing where they got beat up and then they came back and they won. But that was at home. And this is on the road at Carolina and Carolina's lost three straight, you know? Um, but, you know, I think Carolina becomes – Carolina played – I had Carolina against Kansas City because you knew Carolina, that was like, like their Super Bowl. You knew they were going to get up for that game. Um, but, you know, I, the Bucks are going to come in mad. And I just – but at the same time, Carolina's playing pretty well, and they're getting Curtis Samuel the ball and stuff like that too. So they're starting to expand a little bit more. And the loss of McCaffrey hurts, but Davis was running the ball pretty well before the anyway. If I had to take a lean, I'd probably take a lean on Tampa Bay just because they got embarrassed on national television. And Carolina's coming off a pretty big high against Kansas City. It's a small lean on Tampa Bay. Okay, steak and a beer, I'm, take, I'm taking Carolina. Steak and a beer, I'm taking Carolina. Uh, there we go. And by the way, this is the biggest mover on the board in terms of totals. It opened up at 46. Now it's at 50 and a half. So there is a ton of money coming in on the over in this game. For those of you looking at totals quickly, uh, and we're going to shut it down here. Um, Monday night football, just a yes or a no. This is the biggest line flip on the board. Look ahead line with Chicago minus two and uh, total 45. Now it's Minnesota minus two and 44. This Is this a huge overreaction to Minnesota winning that game last week the way they did, Arun? Yeah, I mean, obviously Minnesota is a completely different team with with Dalvin Cook, you know, um, yeah. and and I think this team beating Green Bay spoke volumes. Um, it's amazing how much one player can impact the team. But this is what we talked about. Minnesota is a team that doesn't have a lot of weapons, but the few yeah. weapons they do they use it correctly. Whereas Tampa Bay has too many weapons, and they haven't figured out who is going right, to get right. the ball. With Minnesota, you got three guys. And one of them is going to touch the ball. And then maybe you sprinkle in a, a fullback here or there. But they know what they're doing. Tampa Bay, there's just too much of a good thing sometimes. So that's what's going on. But, uh, but yeah, at, you know, that Atlanta loss is what motivated them. Atlanta's a yep. great team to play. because when you After you play Atlanta, either you get your stuff together or you're going to be able to come back and win. Everybody should want to play the Falcons every week because that's going to be, uh, you know, that's going to change your culture. That's what Atlanta did for Minnesota because – they beat Minnesota yeah. next thing. Yeah, Minnesota beats Green Bay, and now they beat Detroit by you know by double digits. Um, is it an overreaction? I, you know, no, I, I don't think so. But keep in mind though that the Bears also have the Packers on deck, and the Bears finally might be coming back down to earth a little bit. You know, I mean they they were always winning these twenty to seventeen games like they did against Tampa Bay. But they came back down to earth against the Rams. They lost to the Saints. But they only lost to the Titans by seven. 
the Bears never ever get blown out, Tony. They just don't. Yeah. Like, Nagy just got to call the games. They just never get blown out. Uh, but Minnesota also knows that they're three and five, and if they win this game, you know they have a real chance of making a run at the playoffs. You know, um, so I I just think that the mojo here is is the Bears are being figured out, and the Vikings are starting to hit their peak. So I can see why people lean on the Vikings. Well, one thing uh, about the Bears, they've had the Vikings number. La- they're four and zero. Oh, their last four, they've got their number. And also, Kirk Cousins, ladies and gentlemen, Kirk Cousins in a primetime game. Uh, we know how that turns out. And by the way, uh, just just in case you're not playing the home game here, uh, the Bears' defense is pretty good at shutting down the run, and they're going to be geared up to shut down Cook because if they got to put the game on Cousins' shoulders, that's exactly right. even even the Bears can beat them. You know, with that's Foles exactly right. a quarterback, and so the, I, the, the, just a couple of. A, a side notes on that one for everybody. Um, my official teaser, last week I gave you a teaser, said it was my official uh, big teaser, and we got our ass kicked. Uh, we had Detroit tied up in that one for you. I don't know what, well, I'm not going to go there, but this week here we were talking about Carolina. A two-team six-point teaser on this week's show from WA is going to be taking Carolina and teasing them up through the six, Arun through the seven, and through the ten. That is a value teaser when you get through three key numbers, uh, up to 11 and a half. And let's go ahead and take Seattle through three key numbers, three, six, and seven, and get them at seven and a half. So you have two teams going through key numbers, catching points in this teaser. That's going to be my teaser pick this week for the show. Uh, anything else going on in room before we shut down the lights and call the day? No, I mean, I think we're all excited about college basketball, which starts in about 14 days. So pretty stoked about yeah. that. Nice to get some normalcy. We're excited about the NBA starting back up around Christmas time, um, which is which is great to get those sports back. And um, hockey should come around by then, too. So it's good to get some normalcy back in the world, you know? Yeah, it sure is. Um, it, well, as, as much as things change, they remain the same um, for the most part. But it's going to be a little bit different. Uh, this this basketball season, see Tom Izzo has COVID, uh, the Michigan State head coach, and and I think you're going to see some COVID. You're seeing a lot of COVID problems right now in college football. Um, you're you're seeing a lot of games canceled, especially in the SEC. Ohio State, uh, as we're taping this, just got shut down. They're not going to play Maryland this week. Um, so COVID's starting to affect things. I know it's going to affect these college campuses. Uh, the more the cold and flu season kind of set in. So it's going to be real interesting how this uh, college basketball is going to be working out. And, of course, uh, the Masters is this weekend. Be sure and stop by the website. There's a lot of guys doing golf. Um, I, I did golf, but I didn't do the Masters. I'm, I'm not going to fire up my golf until after the first of the year. But I do have a video with some from my, my Masters picks, all the ones I bet in Vegas yesterday. Uh, I put it up free on video for you, so be sure and tune in there. Catch a room this weekend in College of Pro Football. Catch myself in College of Pro Football. Got a big play on Saturday in College Football. Two weeks in a row we banked our top play there. And a little bounce back for me in the NFL. And I know Rune will have all kinds of goodies for you there on the website. Free $60 by clicking that link in the description below. All you need to do is just uh, copy and paste that link. And get yourself over to Docs and get yourself hooked up this weekend. For Arun Shiva, I'm Tony George. Thanks for tuning in.